Welcome to episode four, and our focus for today is all about monogramming. So over the years, from working at various retailers, doing branding, marketing, styling, visual merchandising, store design, trend direction, um, I've learned that personalization is so important. To be able to personalize your store or your e-commerce site or your packaging or your apparel and your style is a way for you to differentiate yourself in the marketplace. And if you think about your home as the truest, most honest expression of who you are, being able to personalize that environment is so important. Um, so monogramming is one of the great ways to be able to do that. So there are two types of ways to execute monogramming. And I'm sure you want to know, like, what is the right way to actually lay it out? Um, the first step is traditional. So my name is Eric Samuel Green. And in a traditional way, I would monogram Eric as the first initial. I would have green as the second initial. So your last name, the first letter, is the center initial. And then the last initial would be S for Samuel. So in a traditional execution of monogramming, your last name, first letter, is the center initial that you see in monogramming. The second way is laid out exactly as you would spell it or exactly as you would write your name. So my name is Eric Samuel Green, once again, and my monogramming is always ESG. And so personally, I really buck the trend. I'm not a traditional person. And so all of my monogramming is non-traditional. It's all ESG. And it's just easier for me. It's how I sign my, my name. Um, and it's something that I feel comfortable with. So, you know, my recommendation to you is if you want to go classic, then you can always go the traditional route. But, you know, if you're more of a modernist or more into contemporary design, and this is something that you want to test in your monogramming, I'd say go non-traditional. You know, it's, it's your personal style, it's your initials, it's your voice, so do it in your way. So now that you've committed to monogramming and you know exactly how you want to lay it out, you still have a few questions like, what color do I get? Should I get it embossed? Should I get it threaded? What's the font? What's the style? Um, the first step after you have made the decision to monogram is make sure that the font, and font is the style of lettering that you want to choose to express your personality using your initials. You want to make sure that that style is complementary to your overall style aesthetic. So a great example is if you are monogramming something that is more feminine and floral, then I would recommend that you go for a much more elongated classic style font versus if you are monogramming something that is more contemporary and modern, I would go for something that is a little more gothic and bold and clean lined. So the net net of it is you want to make sure that your font style and the overall style of the lettering that you select complements the product that you're putting it on or the furniture that you're putting it on as well as your overall aesthetic you definitely don't want those two clashing together my next recommendation, once you've selected your font and you know exactly how you want it laid out, is to stay consistent with the font type. Yes, that's right. This is the easiest mistake that so many people make, is that once you actually start to monogram, you become obsessive with it. You love it so much that you start to explore and test and try a bunch of new monograms in your, in your home, whether it's initials and multiple letters, etc. My recommendation is find one type of monogram font and use that strategically in your home. You definitely don't want four and five different monogram types throughout your home. 
it gets very frenetic, it gets crazy, and um, it's really just not aesthetically pleasing. So my recommendation is once you actually make the commitment to monogram, just choose one that you love the most and use that throughout your home. So the next step is for you to really consider how far do you want to go with monogramming? And this is a question that I ask myself often. And personally for me, you can never go too far because, you know, I've monogrammed my cell phone case, I've monogrammed my journal, I have trays in my guest bathroom, I have trays on my coffee table that have my initials on it. Um, they're all discreet. Um, and they don't scream my initials, but um, I like to see them strategically placed throughout my house. So my question for you that you should be asking yourself is how far do I wanna go with monogramming? Is it one item? Is it multiple? Is it five or six? It's really important for you to understand what your level of commitment to monogramming is. And I would say subtle is better, less is more, one to two items and start first with your initials versus your full monogram. If you do it small and you do it strategically and you do it in a place that's visible, you'll not only appreciate it, but your guest will appreciate it too. So now that you have figured out how to monogram, you've made the commitment on what your font is, you know exactly what you want it placed on, what's the last thing for you to consider? Well, my recommendation is if you feel confident in monogramming and you are subscribing to this design tip, then I say break the rules. Yes, that's right. So now I'm saying go bold because if you have identified that you feel confident in monogramming and you celebrate it and you love it and it's something that you're passionate about, you can go bold and break the rules by monogramming something like your headboard in your bedroom or creating a great tapestry piece with, with your initials on it, or taking your, the back of your sofa and having that monogrammed with your initials on it. So remember, this is not for those of you who are new to monogramming. It is not for those of you who are um, considering what monogramming can do. When I say break the rules around monogramming, guys, I'm really talking about for those of you who have embraced it, who are obsessed with it, and who want to really make it their own. I say you break all the rules and you choose a bold execution that is unique and memorable. I love creating memories and special moments with my friends and family. And it's so important to me being a, a busy professional and leading a very active life that when I'm at home, I want it to be special and I want it to be meaningful and I want to be able to enjoy quality time with my friends and family. So one of the things that I decided to do um, to create and leave a memorable thought to my guest was I decided to have monogram napkins in my guest bathroom. So I didn't really realize how important and how meaningful this was until I had an aunt who actually visited me in my New York City apartment. And um, she enjoyed her stay, she loved the apartment, she loved spending quality time with me. And then I went back to her home and I actually saw her probably about two or three months later. And what I realized as I was in her bedroom is that she had actually kept the guest bathroom napkin from my home. She had actually kept it as a memento and a keepsake of her loved nephew. And I thought, wow, this is exactly what monogramming is about. It's about creating memorable moments that are personable, that are meaningful, and that have value, not only just to you, but to those who actually experience it with you. So my recommendation and expert tip is to always, 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 when you're monogramming, think about the small little personal touches. And if it can be something that people can take away or people can remember um, because it's focally placed, the better. <laughs>